I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dykus, retired. The story we're about to bring you contains a novel word, Zumi. In Navy parlance, a Zumi is an aviator. During World War II, our submarine lifeguard league fished from the sea a total of 504 Zumis. These included men from all branches of our services, as well as our allies. Some of these rescues were routine. Others were very dangerous and unpredictable of success. This is the story of the USS Aspro and its attempt to rescue Izumi from the water not far from Tokyo itself. The body of water touching on the port cities of Tokyo and Yokohama and flowing into the Pacific is called in Japanese Sagami Nada. On the morning of August 3rd, 1945, just east of the island of Oshima, the USS Aspro surfaced to begin lifeguard duty. Commander James H. Ashley, Jr. of Clinton, Indiana, was her skipper. He was a veteran submariner, but new to the Aspro. Today marked her eighth day at sea under his command. The executive officer was Lieutenant A.W. Weaver of Brewster, New York, a veteran of seven war patrols, most of them aboard the Aspro. Chief Gunner's mate, G.E. Murphy of Pawtucket, Rhode Island, was the chief of the boat. He was a man never at a loss for a word or a cigar. No lifeguard submarine worked alone. Approaching from the south to join the Aspro came two other members of the team, the Dumbos. These planes carrying lifeboats acted as the eyes of the lifeguard. When necessary, the boats were parachuted to the Zumi in trouble. Close behind came the flight of fighters to fly air cover. The lifeguard was useful only if she could remain surfaced. As it had been on many a previous morning, the store was open. There was only one thing to do, wait for customers. Well, there they go, Mr. Weaver. Pretty sight, isn't it? Yeah, a day like this, they can really get in there and raise some dust. Yeah, those cloud formations will hide them over Tokyo. They need it. No flying bombers, you can drop the stuff from way up. These guys go right down on the deck. Gotta be a little punchy to do that. Yeah, I guess you do. Guess that's why I never made it. Well, they couldn't have rejected you for pilot training on that score, Murphy. They did. Doc said I was uh, psychologically unqualified. I said I'd take the submarine service. He said that was okay. Yeah, they figure you're good for one thing and not the other. I'm afraid that's one of life's little mysteries, Murphy. Yeah. I guess I'm better off. A buddy of mine made it. He's dead now. Roger! What do you think you're doing? Nothing. I saw you following them guys. Oh, what's wrong with that? It's good practice. If there had been enemy planes, I'd have had them. After what happened last week, I told you never to aim your gun at none of our planes. Well, she couldn't fire. I had it at half load. At first, you took it that Mustang last week. That was at half load, too, huh? Right. I made a mistake. It could have been a very costly mistake. I missed it, didn't I? Just the same. Never aim your gun at none of our planes. Okay. Okay, but it's good practice. And that's why I'm the best gunner in this boat. Yeah? If you were that good, you'd have hit him. Yeah! Uh, that burns in some screwball. Oh, I don't know. What he was doing was good practice. That's why he's the best gunner on this boat. Well, I ain't worried about you, Mr. Weaver. But if the skipper found out, I better check the deck gun crew, sir. The skipper found out what? He thinks he don't know Burnson fired on that Mustang last week. If they had it their way, a skipper would know only the right things his crew does. Right on time. How'd you like some of that for breakfast? It's bad enough when I get grapefruit in my eye. Every time I hear that, Al, I just can't help feeling sorry for those people. It's the distance. What's distance got to do with it? If we were in there closer, they'd be shooting at us. And you wouldn't be sorry for anybody. Now I see what you mean. Japan's defenses were being softened for the coming invasion. 
Every man on Aspro knew that. Scuttlebutt had it that the war would last at least another six months. It was still three days before the atomic bomb would be dropped on Hiroshima. Bridge, radio. Go ahead, radio. VHF reports a pilot down in southwest Sagami Nada, sir. Request Dumbos to investigate. Come left, 350. Come left to 350. Captain speaking, go ahead. Dumbo reports to me at 35-11 north, 139-20 east. They dropped lifeboat. Zumi was seen getting into it. Advise Dumbo's to circle Zumi. Put him on course 150. All ahead full. All ahead full. Take the car now. You get the position on that survivor, Bill? I hope there's a mistake. Why? Puts him less than four miles offshore. In North Sagami Nada, not south. Radio room. Contact the Dumbo pilot who gave you the coordinates. Ask him to verify. Aye, aye, sir. There's got to be something wrong, sir. How well, about our course? This is close enough. Dumbo's will correct us if it's not. Assuming the worst, how far are we away from him? 35 to 40 miles. How much chance that close in? Japanese could get him with a patrol boat. With the Dumbo's covering him, I don't think a patrol boat will try him. Captain, Dumbo pilot reports the position is correct. Advises we change course 10 degrees port. Very well, radio. Take us two hours at least. Yes, sir. If we make a surface approach at flank speed. We're in deep water. We can always dive if trouble shows. I'm thinking of the mines, Captain. They don't show. We just have to take that chance, Bill. If we don't hurry. He may drift under some shore battery and we'd never get him. I heard the confirmation, Captain. How close? Four miles off the beach. Something bothering you, Captain? Shore batteries. They can't miss spotting us. We'll be coming in at high noon. You know, maybe they won't be firing at us. Why not? We'll figure no enemies up. It'd be dumb enough to come with a view of the beach this time of day. Well, I hope you're right. Yeah, so do I. With a customer waiting, all hands had only one objective supplies of service. Planes off the port bow, sir. The new Dumbo is coming to relieve the others. Keep a sharp lookout. We're getting close. Captain, fight a plane flight leader reports one hour of gas remaining. Roger. How do you like that? There goes our air cover. We ought to be there by then. Those guys can sure pick the right time to run out of gas. Take the car now. Making good time, Captain. Passed into Sagami Nada two minutes ago. What do you figure? In 45 minutes. Look out, should see the boat in half an hour. Well, maybe we'll make it. You're not going to submerge? No. Not unless we're attacked. Parallel is Maypole 1. Parallel is Maypole 1. Unidentified aircraft to the west. Aircraft to the west. Proceed with caution, over. Maypole 1, this is Parallel. Roger. Are you carrying bombs? Over. Parallel, Maypole. We are loaded. Over. Maypole 1, suggest you jettison. Are you aware of fighters' gas supply? Over. Yes, we are, Parallel. Will do. You are about 15 miles from Survivor. Over and out. Those planes could have been ours. It's nearly half an hour since contact. If the fighters are forced into a dog fight, they won't have gas enough to get home. I know. These darn cloud formations are going to make it tough to spot anything before it's right on top of us. Hold off the starboard barrel, sir. It's a Zumi, Captain. Right on the nose. Quick, try that again! 
They're going after the zooming. Where's our fighter cover? There they are, sir. Anybody hurt? Bergson? Ted? They came out of nowhere. I thought they were ours. If we can help it, we might lose it. This plane's a ten in opposition. You can bet on that. It's only another ten or fifteen minutes. We can make it. Yeah, but did he? Take a look. Could be laying low. Hey, they got one. Scratch one meatball. It's one of ours. Maybe he'll bail out. like a rock. Dumbos are chasing him off. Maryland, Temple 1, we are forced to pull out. Over. Temple 1 from Parallel. Thanks for your help. We're sorry to see you go. Over. Out. There go the fighters. How's it look? No sign of life. Bridge watch, gun crew resume stations. Maypole one, this is parallel, over. Go ahead, parallel. Can you confirm survivor's condition? Is he dead or alive, over. We'll circle and see, over. Wave something. Stand up. Give us an idea. Parallel. This is Maypole. I'm approaching the boat. We are directly over Survivor. There is no movement in boat. Shall we make another run and try again? Over. Negative, Maypole. Out. Where does that leave us? Something like seven miles off the beach, if I'm not mistaken. brought the Aspro closer to the Zumi with no verification from the Dumbo, nor visual contact by the men on the Aspro as to the downed pilot's condition. He was in limbo, not dead, not alive. Commander Ashley had no choice but to discover the truth for himself. All back full, rescue party, stand by. All back full, rescue party, stand by. Anything? Parallel is Maple one. Bandit sighted to north. Repeat, one bandit to north, over. Keep him off our backs, Maypole. We're almost there. Roger parallel. He's flying course 350. Does not appear interested. There is a sign of activity from Zumi. You have a live one out. Captain, look. All stop. Rescue party on deck. All stop. Rescue party on deck. You got what? Well, I hit him. 
I didn't splash him, but I hit him. Out, Scout. Scratch one enemy plane off the starboard bow. Advise all hands. The plane that bombed us just splashed off the starboard bow. See, I told you. I told you. Okay, okay. So what do you want? A medal? How's that zooming? All he needs is a hook and line, and he can go fishing. Down scope. Hello, Maypole 1. This is Parallel. Over. Come in, Parallel. Are you okay? Over. Shook us up a little, that's all. How's the weather? Over. Looks all clear, but I guarantee nothing after that one. Too many clouds. Over. We're coming up. Out. This is the captain. We've been seen and reported by the enemy. That means that every man must be on his toes for any emergency. Now we're going to surface again. I'll be the only man on the bridge. The lookouts and bridge watch stand by in the control room and conning tower for orders. Shooting, Benson. Stand by. We might need you to do it again. Open the hatch. Rescue party, stand by. Our zoomie's on his way. up there and 90 zombies down here. You can say that again. Hey, we better get out of here. Time scope. Dumbo splashed him. Keep the scope up as a marker. He can be right there when we surface. Home subback just radioed in this message, sir. Admiral Lockwood views with alarm the engagement of enemy aircraft by submarines of the Pacific Fleet. Maybe he thinks we had a choice. We gotta get that zoomy now, Captain. Don't want anybody saying we stuck our necks out for nothing. Right full rudder. Right full rudder. Maypole 1, this is parallel. Is it safe to surface? Over. Parallel from our position, it looks all clear, but keep in mind we are flying at 200 feet. Over. How about going upstairs and taking a look? Over. Cannot comply. We are nearly critical on gas. You will have to pick up survivors soonest. Maypole over. Out. Prepare to surface. The old man's got rocks in his head. How many times is he going to try it? He knows what he's doing. It's not like this is just what we need. Gives the morale of the flyboys a shot in the arm. It's one thing being up there shooting at him, but laying here naked, like a duck treading water. <laughs> I don't like it. We quit now. We'll look pretty yellow to that zoomie sitting up there waiting for us. <laughs>
way. Clear the gate! H. Mike, Squadron 58th Fighter Squadron. My name's Ashley. We'll talk later. Take him down to the farms to me. Maple 1, this is Parallel. Over. Go ahead, Parallel. The survivor is Captain Edward H. Mikes. Wound superficial. You can go home now. We thank you. Over. We're on our way, Parallel. Of any interest to you, we sighted five Georges and three Pete's approaching position of submergence. Over and out. Take her down to 200 feet. Take her down to 200 feet. Funny how you only feel it when it's all over. Yeah. It's a couple of all. I need a drink. I'll settle for coffee. I tell you, Captain Ashley, when you dove that second time, I was ready to give up. I never thought you'd be back, and I wouldn't have blamed you. Not a bit. We thought you were dead after that plane strafed you. I was okay, all during the dogfight. Then I started blacking out. How'd you lose your plane, Black? No. After we dropped our bombs, I led my flight over Kofu Airfield. I spotted a tank alongside a railroad track and went down. I got it. It got me. It's pretty risky business. I guess about the same as yours. You and your crew, Captain. Much obliged. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. The chief of the boat of a submarine is the top chief petty officer aboard. His responsibility is to see that the orders of the executive officer are carried out by the crew. It is a job that calls for knowledge, forcefulness, and tact. To hold it, a chief must be outstanding. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you Mr. George E. Murphy, who was the Aspro's chief of the boat when she made the rescue you've just seen. Mr. Murphy, you are in a hard fighting ship. It was a pleasure to be on that ship. The crew had a lot of drive. When we went on lifeguard duty, they put just as much into saving lives as they did torpedoing ships. I imagine a lot of it was pride. It was. We weren't going to have a fly or die without trying even the impossible. Captain Ashley must have enjoyed leading that crew. We would have followed him anywhere. We were a team. I'm sure I speak for our audience when I say congratulations to the ASPRO on a really outstanding performance. Thank you, sir. I hope you will be with us again when we bring you another true and exciting story taken from the history of the silent service. Oh, the world in the view.